Hello friends, uh, today the whole world is fighting or dealing with the unprecedented Corona crisis. Well, this makes us more innovative and gives us more ideas about how efficiently the dental clinic design post Corona is going to change. So this is what I will be discussing with you dear friends. You know that we are going to reach about 12 lakh cases and there are a, the peak is going on increasing. Now, everybody scared us four months ago saying that the dental professionals were at the biggest risk of falling ill or causing infection to other people. So, you know, is it true? Yes, to prevent cross-contamination, there is a need to change what we are usually doing in our dental office. However, there is no need for fear. We dentists are very resilient and we are going to adapt to the changing circumstances. This is the scenario in every industry. You look at tourism, you look at anything. Everybody is coping with the pre and post Corona crisis. Well, for an ideal clinic design, what do you need? You need a cost effective dental office. You need reliability. You need warranty of all your instrumentation because we need a lot of equipment, ergonomic soundness, promotion of productivity. The appearance needs to be good. Design and features can uh, you need to plan them types of patients you want to serve also determine what type of clinic design and what kind of operator you are left-handed right-handed evaluation and application of new and emerging technologies is the core so all of us know that the eye what the eye sees has an impact on the brain so your design matters you know the design of the clinic the accessibility especially for disabled patients is a very important criteria the second being function, you know, the functionality to be giving efficient treatment results to the patient, the compliance to the local rules and regulations that govern the practice of dentistry and aesthetics. You know, we spend most of our time of the day in the clinic. So if it is aesthetic, it will give us an emotional well-being in the clinic itself. So let's look at the basic architectural zone of a clinic. There is a public zone, there is a staff zone and the clinical zone. The public zone is the reception area, the waiting area, the doctor's consultation room and the patient rest room. Whereas the staff region is the doctor's office room, staff rest room, staff lounge, laboratory, storage room, the clinical area being the treatment room, x-ray room, laboratories and the sterilization room. So all these typically make up a dental operator. Now a chair is six feet by four feet. So we require three feet working area around the head of the chair as a dentist. So approximately 120 square feet is the area which is required for a comfortable functioning of a single chair. Similarly, if five or six patients are to sit in the waiting chamber, it's going to be about 120 square feet. If we want a very comfortable area for having a consultation, it's going to be approximately 120 square feet again. And the reception area where our staff is going to collect payments, give instructions and interact with the patients is about 100 feet. Now, the US has a you know, typically different design from our designs. There is a disability access, there are good signages, there is good carpeting, there is a countertop width, emergency alarms, there is occupational health and safety laws, especially for nitrous oxide, radiation hazards and biological waste management. And this is coming up in a big way in our country as well with the advent of the Clinical Establishment Act. Now, there are also environmental factors which need to be considered nowadays, especially when we are you know, disposing of biomedical waste as well as uh, waste into the outer environment. Now, a typical zoning of a dental clinic looks like an operatory, a triage reception and a staff zone. So now let's look at a single chair operator. What's a preferred model? The reception area separate, the operatory separate, and if possible, if there is more space for keeping records as well as the staff zone and for laboratory and other functions. Now let's look at a multi-chair uh, clinic. There is a special area for triage and reception. There's an operatory which is separated from each other. There is a staff room where the doctor talks with the patient. Now, this is what the Clinical Establishment Act has given, that this is the minimum space required to be able to run a dental setup. 
and all of us working in big cities understand the value of land and the value of area now this is typically a floor design for any setup we need a washing area we need to put our instrumentation in place we need to have an x-ray unit we need a place for an attendant to sit in the operator now let's look at a typical dental uh, hospital or what you call as just like most uh, dental colleges work multiple chairs lined up in an operatory and these are very cost effective it's called the open chair method of uh, arranging chairs but there is no privacy of the patient and the barriers are not there now for a single chair to be separate we would like privacy for the patient and especially after this corona outbreak we would like you know not uh, the environment of one uh, operatory not to be transferred to another operatory then there could be a dual entry type of uh, uh, operatory where there are two entries one for the staff and one for the patient wherein it the workability is very easy and good then there is if there is space deficiency there is also a single operatory system single entry wherein sing in the single entry you do not you are saving a bit of space so it's more economical and permit more density of the operatories for limited office use now this is how two operatories would need to be separated over a period of time and if you look at the ergonomics the you know the left side of the working top where you are putting your instrumentation should be 30 cm from the center axis of the patient chair and it should be 20 cm from the head of the chair therefore a ideal table top would require about 100 cm in width the, so so you know we we require space for proper functioning also the heights are very critical because if you see the upright balance position a 120 degree angle is you know good for our health and our spine also the height of the working stools 75 to 85 cm why do we need them because if we want our spine to be straight we will need this much height for the operating table to be there modular systems that easily roll can provide ideal preferred ergonomic placement of instruments supplies and monitor viewing and especially in today's era digitization has to be the key if you are going to have a digital scanner you are going to have a t scan you are going to have digital equipment then cpu the 3d microscopes computer recorders and all additional cabling would require to have a compact area and this compact area would be very important because we need to protect this with a cling film for every patient but we have to maintain sanitization and prevention of cross infection so how has covid changed things now we you know tele screening has become the call of the day we schedule an appointment we don't allow crowding into the reception and the patient is told to wait in the car before we talk to them on the telephone and then bring them in every operatory would require these things everybody is talking about it. so where do we place them has to also be figured in while you plan your clinic so you need to place place a thermal scanner a pulse oximeter you need to have a shoe dispenser you you know a, a dispenser for your gloves you need to have a touch free hand sanitizer Uh, system in place and you need to have a partition you know a partition so that uh, your patient and your staff are not in contact with each other also your reception needs to be clutter free you know you have to remove all those files those documents and you have to go the way which is digital you have to ensure that the two patients sit 6 feet apart from each other so and also there are visual alerts like who has mentioned like cough etiquettes about how you need to maintain a uh, hygiene and wearing three layer masks sanitizers glove dispensers everything has to be in place and we need to have a region which is free from fomites like you know having magazine stands and all they need to be removed from the operator now cashless economy or digital payments is the mode to go ahead with in the staff zone we need to see that the staff uh, where the staff is there there is limited access of other people there is a proper ppe doffing and donning area this is very important and a log register for n95 rotational use and this sop should be clearly demarcated in the operator also we need to you know place these symbols so that 
you know, it's a constant reminder for the staff what steps they need to do for their N95 to be reused or for, uh, you know, there are many, multiple respirators now available, but uh, the national guidelines for infection control have just recently come in. So, you know, the government is also trying to ensure that uniformity in maintaining proper discipline while running a setup. And they've given, like, for example, you want to mop your floor, there is a triple bucket technique. So you need three buckets, one with hypochlorite, one with warm water, and one with plain water. And this needs to be placed somewhere. You know, you can't create a space where these three buckets would be lying and not hindering with the patient or your staff work. Also, sterilization room. You know, the dirty breakdown and the clean buildup needs to be maintained separately. That means that contaminated versus non-contaminated areas need to be clearly demarked. That is, a clean zone should be used to keep autoclaved instruments, and this cycle should not be crossed. Meaning that your instrumentation should be such that they should be washed, dried, they should be cleaned, they should be autoclaved in a B-class autoclave and then stored without crossing each other or mixing up of instruments. Biomedical waste also becomes very, very critical in post-corona. Double layered bags should be used for collection of waste and the COVID waste should be kept separately in temporary storage room. We all know that one meter near the dental chair is an area of 100% contamination and 50 meters, 50% 50 two meters away. So we have to be very sure about placing barriers between two operators, which are six feet apart. We also have been, you know, bombarded with a lot of information how long the coronavirus or the SARS virus lies on which surface. But to be on a safer side, we have to use everything which is disposable, the cling wraps have to be disposed of after every patient. Also, barriers need to be properly followed. The masks, gloves, eye protection, pre-procedural mouth rinse, high volume evacuators, use of particulate air room filters and ultraviolet treatment for ventilation system. Also, the air exchange should be minimum of 12 in an enclosed operatory and six for an open operatory because this will reduce 63% of the aerosols from the environment and negative room pressure is what is advocated. So even if you are disposing of this air outside, it's a duty that this contaminated air does not contaminate the environment. So a HEPA filter needs to be in place. So this is how you would make it go. You should have a UV unit or a HEPA filter so that the negative pressure is maintained in the room and there is a room diffuser for air returning to the room. Now, the CDC and the Association of Heating and Refrigeration of a country has given a different kind of setup if we had a window or if we didn't have a window. So I'd request that you go to their website and see what kind of operation suits your operatory better. There are numerous systems available now where environmental monitor controls are there, visual pressure indicators are there, and construction kits are there. But how do we choose? Look at this picture. In the middle zone is a medium risk application for medical facilities. That means that a minimum class of E12 or higher is required for our kind of air filtration systems. Anti-retraction valves in our handpieces, all of us know that. We all know that fumigators, foggers, a lot of confusion, a lot of new innovations like the aerosol protection domes, the extra oral suctions, the iron wave generators and the air purifiers, number of things are available. This is the IQ air system from Switzerland, very popular in Singapore and many other, many dental facilities there, really good system, but where do you keep it? Have you planned for this in your clinic? That needs to be considered. You need to look at the leakages of air. You also need to formulate an isolation clinic if you have more than one chair, meaning where you're going to do an aerosol procedure, Mark, markings should be red or blue depending on access to the patient as well as to the attendants and you need to make this area very very sterile now air conditioning we have a non-centralized air conditioner or a centralized air conditioner so in a non-centralized an exhaust fan located so that unidirectional flow of air is possible this ac needs to be serviced frequently and the filters clean and hepa filters are easily available you know, 3M filters of rupees 300 can be put in and which can be removed after six months and it can be cleared. Also, if 
you are using centralized air conditioning they should be you know for the ahu can be stopped for some time to have adequate ventilation from outside air and allow fresh air into the rooms extra oral or intra oral films everybody is advocating an extra oral film but you know the chin rest and the rotary arms need to be covered with disposable polythene covers and changed for every patient and at least two layers similarly with the intra oral films now before covid the telephonic triage was not important now it's very important first appointment you know antigen testing for aerosol procedures the government says should be done for dental staff social hygiene has changed they communicate through protective partitions wear surgical masks head disinfection with a hand disinfection is common for dental professionals you know the uniform they used to wear a particular uniform of the clinic but hand washing needs to be frequently done ffp or ffp3 masks need to be worn now shoe discover, uh, cover uh, face mask head cap protective goggles all need to be the order of the day hygiene for the oral cavity you know 1% hydrogen peroxide and 0.2% providine iodine but the dental procedures extra oral x rays preferable use of rubber dam for isolation reduce aerosol procedures the disposable instruments as much as possible cad cam high volumes aspirating systems and traditional dental records to be converted into disinfectable synthetic materials hygiene in a dental office needs to change air exchange has become critical we need pure air and air sanitization becomes a very very critical aspect of a new dental office so dear friends a lot of changes need to be brought about in a dental office before we can set up our battle against covid